All right, so we have our mountain. Let's just create a grid. I want to use this as a reference for the water. Let's call this water. I'm going to make this 1,000 units big. And real quick, let's just go into the water and drop down a color. And let's color this blue. All right. And now we can just move this up to get a kind of get a better reference of what's going on. So already that's our island looks pretty cool. And all right, so now let's start taking a test render. See what we got here. So I'm going to control click on the camera. That's going to set a camera in our current position. And We've assigned our shader, principal shader. Let's go to the shader here. And let's also go to the render view. Go to our camera here. And let's take a render and it's gonna automatically create this mantra IPR. All right, so this is what we got in mantra. One thing is we want to use the base color. We want to use 100% of it. So I'm going to drag this up to 1. So that's using the baked point color. Another way we can drive that in when we go to edit this is we're going to drop down a parameter. That's how we can manually choose the attributes we want to bring in. So under the name, I'm going to type in CD and we want to make that type a vector because color is a vector attribute. And now we could plug that CD into the base color. We've kind of let that update. If we uncheck point color now, we'll get the exact same thing. So now we're driving it by this attribute and the reason why I did that is because we're also going to bring in our mask parameter. So let's type in parameter. Let's grab another attribute here. I'm going to choose the attribute mask. And this is going to be the mask that we created when we baked out our parameters here. So if we just plug the mask straight into the base color, that's great. So it's a perfect white to black because we got a perfect red value off of our mask there. All right, so what I want to do is I want to multiply our color parameter by our mask here. And to do that, we're just going to type in a mix. What I want to do is just I want to plug our mask into the bias and then the color into our input one, and let's throw that back into the base color. So essentially now we're getting our mask on top of our color here. And so finally, this is all gonna make sense when we plug in our texture for a rock. So let's go to our principal shader. We're just gonna go into the textures tab here and under base color, let's use the texture and let's navigate to your assets and let's grab the texture for the mossy oak rock here. So I'm going to grab the albedo texture, load that in and let's take another render here. So now you can see we're mixing in our rock texture and it's most prevalent in the lighter areas of our original color here. So this is just giving us a little extra detail in the color of the mountain, but mainly where it's white, we're going to get that full rock texture. So this is kind of an easy way to set this up. I don't want to go too in depth on creating big shaders for a mountain here. So now that we have this, I'm going to actually scale down the UVs to get more of a condensed rock texture because right now it's looking a bit big. So let's just take a snapshot here and under the scale, since this rock texture is really quite big, I've found a value 
found a value of 0 0.025 was good as essentially we are tiling the texture 50 times. And now it's going to make more sense when we plug in our displacement. So under displacement, I'm going to enable texture displacement. And I've also found for this, I'm going to actually use the, the normal map as a displacement. I just like the details more than the actual bump map or the displacement. I'm going to keep everything at default. And in the effect scale, I'm going to choose minus one to displace this. All right, guys, so I've just done a 1080p render here instead of the 720. And I've increased the pixel samples just a little bit so we can see the detail better. But essentially, this is our mountain with before the displacement. And then after, you can see all the extra detail, especially on the rocks that we're getting. So that's looking really good. And of course, it's adding that displacement to the rest of the mountain as well, which is just going to break it up a little bit better. And remember, this is mostly going to be covered with trees down in this area. So I've essentially taken the effect scale of our texture to negative 1.5, and that's because we're using the normal again instead of the actual texture of the displacement. And in the settings, we've scaled down the UV by scaling it down, we're tiling it more. So essentially this was a rock texture from Quixel Studio. And to use a rock texture for an entire mountain, we've tiled it 200 times to cover this space. So in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and start setting up our trees and instances.